I mean, if if you're not French, I think the whole world's cheering on Morocco. Um, and Morocco <laughs> are at plus 675. They've been unbelievable. They've only let in one goal, and it was one of their players who scored it. Uh, France at minus 200. Bit fortunate to get through against England, but they did what they needed to do, and that's what you find in world champions. They do what they need to do. The draw is at plus 300. You've got to look at the under and over. So the under two is at plus 125. Surely this game, again, is another tight game because that's what Morocco will set up. France, minus one at minus 115. Matty, I'll come to you first because I, I don't see France blowing Morocco away because Morocco will play the way they, because if it's not broke, it don't need fixing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly what you just said. If it's not broke, don't fix it. I mean, who is beating anybody by more than one goal at this stage in the tournament? Is that plus one a gift or a trap? I'm hoping it is a gift. And just to dive into some of the numbers here, we have some really interesting ones. France scoring 2.2 goals a game in this tournament and conceding, just like Argentina, exactly one goal. Um, also hitting both teams to score in 80% in 80 of their matches. And we're going to have complete opposite numbers for Morocco. One goal scored per game, 0 0.2 goals conceded. The only conceded goal was an own goal, and only both teams to score hitting in 20% of matches. Look, Morocco has just been playing so good defensively. By far the best defensive team um, in this tournament, in my opinion, so far. And I think they could give France some very, very um, big problems, especially if France can score early in this game. If France score early in this game, they can sit back, have a cup of tea in the back, of the field and this game is over but if they don't score in this first half this game is going to start shifting into morocco's favor the later it gets into this match um i do fancy the under two goals in this game as well i i, I don't really expect morocco to score i do think they could keep a clean sheet in this game i really do i really think we could see a zero zero um in this matchup maybe they can get a goal on the counter but i'm not expecting them to score in this game i i really do like the under um, and I think that France team total under one and a half is pretty tempting at minus 105 odds. Mina, the problem I have with France going one nil up is that they could probably score two or three on the break because Morocco, it's do or die. But then on the opposite side of the coin is Morocco need to set up and stay in the game as long as possible. And if there's a defensive lapse, they've got the ability, they've got the energy and they've got the spirit to capitalise. But all the numbers, again, are saying France won, Morocco nil. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the athleticism, right? They're both like a great group of athletes. Um, it's This is a really interesting matchup because on a psychological level, if there's ever a team that you want to beat when you're Morocco, it's going to be France. So uh, it, it's interesting because you could just see sort of the, like Paris, obviously, um, just exploded in celebrations when Morocco beat Portugal because of, of the North African contingent. And then uh, later that night when they defeated England, it was the Parisians and the, and, or the Frenchmen who obviously celebrated like crazy for defeating that and going uh, to another semi-final. For me, we're talking about the best defence. To, to not look at under two at one, 125, mm, I think that's... I mean, that's so much value on something that I think is a is a given, frankly speaking. Uh, if there is a goal, I can't imagine it being more than a 1-0. There is an opportunity for, obviously, for Morocco to score. And I say this because Teo Hernandez and Opa Meccano have the ability to make a lot of mistakes, um, especially if they're provoked. Another thing that's interesting is that people keep talking about how Rabiot has been brilliant, and I don't deny it, he has been brilliant. But a lot of that has to do with how much work uh, Chalmini has been doing in the middle. He has been everywhere, covering gaps, doing everything. So if you can in some way distract him and, and somehow capitalize on Rabiot not being in his position, there's another way for you to score a goal. It's just whether or not Morocco have enough going forward, um, because on a mental level, it takes a lot out of you defensively. They are obviously with. They could be without size. They are without Chidera, but I don't think that's a huge loss going forward. This isn't a guy that's the most accurate in scoring goals. So I look at this, and and somehow I just. France know how to play the moments. That's what they do so well. They don't need to give you their best. They do enough, but they have a mistake in them, and that's the only thing that makes me think this is a Moroccan side that is, playing for so much more than just a game of football. To them, this is just. It's just about so much more so they will dig in one last time and i think that this is the team like they almost like this is has to be a win it just this is the game that you have to win 
And so I don't know. It, it is true because what we're talking about is the perfect team right now. I, I know that a lot of people can criticize France because they never really show us how good they are. But to me, they're a team that just so comfortable. If you if you try to stop Mbappe, there's Giroud who can score a goal. If it's not Giroud, then Dembele will hit you. Griezmann knows how to pick up all pockets. But a really tightly packed defense, Griezmann is going to be really important in this match. And I'd love to see what's going to happen. Um, but I honestly don't know which way to go. But I do believe in the underdog. And I actually believe in Morocco's chances. There's value there. I think it's going to be an under game. And, um, and I think there's going to be many corners because it's going to be a lot of panicking. Yeah, right. Okay, let's break this down into uh, the work, like tactics. Because Morocco against Spain and against Portugal played a defensive triangle with Naz uh, El Nesri sitting and stopping the ball going in to whether it was um, Busquets for, for Spain or whether it was for Bernardo Silva. And basically they stayed and they broke. The problem you've got here is France haven't got that creativity in midfield. They have to go round the corners to Dembele, to Mbappe, into Griezmann. And then all of a sudden I'm thinking, Morocco can't set that triangle. So because France don't haven't got the abilities to play like a Spain or a Portugal through them central areas. So the, he's going to have, the coach of Morocco is going to have to be really on his toes here and, and think, OK, so now maybe we go 4-4-2 or we go 4-4-1-1. And we play on the front foot a little bit more. But the one thing they cannot afford to do, in my eyes, is go 1-0 down. So let's have a little look at what the odds are at half-time. What the odds are for both teams to score. France to be leading at half-time, minus 125. Morocco to be leading at half-time is plus 600. We've got to look at the bottom of the page because nearly every one of these games, I know Morocco scored very late on in the first half against uh, Portugal. Again, defensive error in the keeper, but a great leap from El Nesri. Half-time draws at plus 100. For me, that's got to be a given. I see France making sure that they dominate the game with threats down the wings. Matty, Halftime draw is at plus 100. Both teams to score no is at minus 165. All these numbers here tell me France 1, Morocco 0, or 0-0. I, th I think what is very interesting about this number for both teams to score being at plus 125, um, it is still hitting 80% for France. Their defense has not been perfect. They're still conceding on average one goal a game. So I do think there is value on that. I just don't think there's, you know, it's the best bet on the board. But I do think there's some some value on it. Um, what I do really like in this game are are corners, and I know Mina likes the corners as well. But I think the more I look at this, the more I like this, and this is my favorite bet of the semifinals. So Morocco on the corner spread lost to Portugal by six, Spain by eight, Canada by four, Belgium by eight, and Croatia by five corners. The corner spread for this game is only three and a half. France beat Poland by six corners, Tunisia by one, Denmark by four, and Australia by seven, and lost to England by three. And to me, this has got to be the best bet on the entire board, especially if Morocco can keep a clean sheet just for 45 minutes in this game. This corner spread should hit absolutely no problem for France, and I think this game could sail way over nine corners in this matchup. And that's if Morocco actually play the way they've been playing. I mean, mm -hmm. it's one of those. They're not going to want to reinvent the wheel because, as I said before, if it's not broke, it don't need fixing, Mina. But they're not playing against a Spain or a Portugal who have unbelievable talent in central midfield areas. All of their uh, sort of jewels, if you like, of the French are down wide and getting the ball into the box. Yeah, this is what's going to be interesting. Also, the, the other thing that you have with France is they've got so many different avenues for goal. They're also one of the few teams that are brilliant from outside of the box. They'll take a shot. We saw that with Chamini, you know? So it's not like they have to play it in like Spain. You're just like, well, you have to pass it into the back of the net. And then that can be a lot easier to defend against. Whereas, for example, with France, you like you said, they have the crosses, they have the speed, they have um, the shot from outside. They can, every single member that they, they, they work in tight spaces, they work in open space. They, it's really, I don't know how you can really defend against all of that, to be honest with you, because they just can come at you from all the different angles. I do think Morocco seems to be quite, um, good when it comes to sort of defending um, in the box. Um, the only, it's the shots from outside the box that worry me, to be honest with you, because I think that's where they'll find the most joy. Like if you get another Chow Mini shot like that, 
oh, that's going to be brilliant. And they should try that quite often um, just to just to destabilize the Moroccan back line if they want to. But I can't see this starting out so quickly. That's the only thing. Um, so I'm not, I, I do I do think to myself, probably a half time draw uh, looks quite tasty to me. I certainly think, obviously, just because the corners, it's it's interesting because I can see both teams scoring in this match. I do think that, you know, if you do get a free kick, Morocco can be good. I do think they can do something um, from a mistake or getting a penalty. I was looking at seeing what the results are of, of, of France giving away a penalty, um, just because Teo Hernandez, I mean, let's just say he loses one of them or they're, they're trying to get for a corner and one of the Moroccans, you know, like slips away on the counterattack. You can imagine Teo making a mistake. You know, we watch him every day for Milan, so we know what happens. So I think Morocco can get a goal. Um, and I think France can too. So under two and a half is probably where the best bet. But you still think to yourself, it's a semi-final. There could be a little fear. So maybe it is just a one nil. Yeah, let's, uh, let me just go into the chat for a, a second because uh, Dior Volerovic, he's Croatian and he's asking whether we think that Croatia... Yes, 100% we think Croatia could uh, make it all the way and and we think that they could negate anything because they've been there, seen it, done it and they passed the ball to death. But when you've got Messi on the other side, Di Maria, Alvarez, Lautaro Martinez, even at set pieces, they could come un unstuck. But it is like a... a 55-45 type game or a 60-40 type game. But let's talk about this Morocco because Morocco were very dangerous first half and they were very dangerous against uh, Spain. But wh what they don't do is they don't force it. In fact, there many times, and we spoke on the shows, about them getting into great crossing positions and not delivering. And then they finally delivered and that's why they got their goal and that's why they're sitting now in the semi-final. Um, the problem I have is France don't go through the middle and this France side are not going to pass the ball in the central areas like Spain and like Portugal did. So Morocco are going to have to come up with something else. Hakimi, absolutely outstanding. Don't know who's going to play at left back, whether it be uh, Mazari or whether it be Ayla, because Bufal and Zayic don't really give you anything. And that means they've done so well, but defensively they've only been with nine players. So... There's so much more to come from the Moroccans. Um, let's have a little look at the official picks. And while we do that, everyone's thinking there's going to be yellow cards in uh, probably both of these games. Um, Griezmann, yes, I agree. Griezmann, Dembele, Mbappe, and obviously Giroud. I've gone with, I've gone with Mbappe to come out on top again. Let's have a little look at these official picks because these are going to be two great games. Under two goals at plus 125. Brings in the France 1-0. Draw half-time. France full-time at plus 275. I think France find a way to uh, proceed to the final. Morocco plus one at plus 105. He's just basically taking the draw. He's taking the Moroccan win. And also, it's a push if France win by one goal. Basically, 1-0 or 2-1. Uh, there's more meat on this bone. So let's give us some other selections in this game, please. France, minus three and a half corners at minus 110. So that means a nice little 7-2, seven, 7-1 seven, for the French. Uh, for me, Mbappe to score first. Well, any time. Any time is plus 150, plus 125. But I've gone with him to score first because I think there'll only be one goal at plus 300. Over nine corners in the game at minus 115. Again, if there's nine, that's a push. Uh, I think I've gone for an added bet in this game. I have. And there it is. Draw half time at plus one hundred. I think it's nil nil at half time, um, and that's because. And I think that I'm going to get that, and that's a free unit for me to put on one of the other selections. Uh, Mina, no gun to the head, but of the way that we've done the two shows, we're looking at. You're looking at maybe Croatia and who in the final? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> are we? Are we? Are you looking at a repeat of the 2018 final? Is it crazy to think that I can rock it and do it? Well, that's is what I mean. Crazy? Yeah, I, I, I don't. It's just that it's so hard for a country to, to manage to win another, you know, consecutive World Cups, right? Italy did it in 34 and 38. But, you know, it's just a different world now. And it's just, um, I don't know. I do, I do, for some reason, believe that Morocco, they're just, they're so comfortable in what they do. They don't make it look like it's work. 
So I just wonder whether they can do it one more time or whether this desire to keep proving something to the world, being the first African nation, the first Arab nation, there's just so much there that you just think to yourself, how much does it mean to everyone? Um, but then you just think of Mbappe, and I had him as top scorer for this tournament. So you did. I Plus 1,000. And he is. Yeah. So, I, you know, like, I mean, if there's anyone who's going to score, it better be Mbappe, <laughs> just because I need to win that. <laughs> No. Yeah, no, um, listen, I, I, I totally agree. I just want um, everyone in the chat, and obviously um, Mitch and Barsaman and Lockheed, they love their bookings, and they're thinking that Amrabat should get booked. If he's going to get booked, there's got to be that line between the back four and the midfield four, because they, they've played on the front foot with the ball in front of them a lot of the time. France have got to come up with a way of getting Griezmann in between that area's but the yeah. ball won't come from central areas. It will come from out wide. So, again, and then that's where your uh, piano carriers, would like Rabio, will be happy to take a pop shot, Matty, on the, uh, from the edge of the box. Um, are, you, are you going with the 200 dogs? Because if Morocco do go through here, is it fair to say they've already won three World Cups? Because they beat Spain, no one gave them a chance. They beat Portugal, no one gave them a chance. And now they're going to have to knock out the reigning world champions. They don't yeah. well too. Yes, yes. And and I mean think about it though. All the pressure in these games is on Argentina and it's on France. This is the most pressure these teams will play with this entire tournament. And they're playing it against two sides that have very little pressure because nobody expected them to make it up to this point. And so that's what I really like about this Morocco side and what I really like about this Croatia side is that they are playing for fun at this point. Obviously, they're house playing for money, Morocco. huh? Morocco are playing yeah. for house money. I'm not having Croatia are playing for house yeah. money. Croatia got were the runners up. We've got two yeah. uh, two of the finalists in the semi final. Croatia Argentina is almost like a 55 45 game. Yeah, and, and I think to me that the main thing in, in this stage of this tournament is I don't see, regardless of the results, I don't see any team winning by more than one goal in this round. I, I just really don't. I think. I think all of these teams are just too close and too good defensively um, yeah. for any team to win by more than one goal in this tournament. And, and that's really why I'm going for Morocco plus one against France in this game. Even if they lose this game, I don't think it's going to be by two goals. No, and listen, we're you just going to say... Think to yourself, like, think of the stadium, right? Like, you just... It was different in Russia. Like, as in, this is... This is in an Arabic country and Morocco is there. Like, just imagine how much of the stadium is going to be in Moroccan colours screaming, you know, um, for that. And, and I just wonder what, but you know what, France is so good under pressure. They're yeah. so good under pressure and in playing the moments. They can be down, but they're never out, a little bit like Croatia. So this one to me is a tighter game. But for some reason, I do believe in Croatia quite a bit. I feel more certain of that than I do of the other one. Okay, thanks for that. When I mean, I've got all my Argentinian flags flying sorry, high, all my I I know, I... yeah, you're not sorry though. I know you're not. Um, I so don't worry. Fine, so I'm, you know, I'm refusing to get into an argument with you, Mina, because I always come up uh, second best. So I'm just going to say yes. I think that you're right, and then you hopefully. Seven times this World Cup, you like your choices have been like. I've just been like, how did you figure that out? And so I'm, yeah, you've been, yeah, great. Great yeah, I don't want to fall at the final hurdle. And there's the other one. No one wants to lose a semi-final. You might as well have gone home in the group stages, apart from Morocco, because Morocco are playing with house money. They're free rolling. But now, are they, do they dare to dream, Matty? Do they dare to dream that they are going to be there on Sunday, the 18th of December? They have the best goalkeeper in this entire tournament, too. I mean, they have a lot going for them. I really think they could get the upset here. And what is kind of funny about this is that Mina has Mbappe, um, top goal scorer of this tournament. But if Argentina gets knocked out and France gets knocked out, that bet still probably wins, even if he doesn't score tomorrow, yeah. which is kind of funny. Then okay. I make or money. Wednesday, rather. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You'll be, the, you'll be number one kappa. Yeah, I'll tell you what the best one is. Argentina winning the World Cup and Mbappe being the uh, top goal scorer because uh, we'll just clean up then. Um, by the way, I congratulations because I think you had, uh, was it a plus 300 for uh, someone to make the quarterfinals or something? So again, that was uh, really good. Yeah, Croatia, plus 300 just to even get to the quarters.